All righty. We kind of did it right. We're one, we're 60 seconds late, but we're here. <laughs> and we had a really cool intro roller thing that uh -huh. worked. And we have a special camera angle this evening. Do you want to see it? Cat's excited. Oh, that's a really good shot. Look at her. She just looks like Quest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you adjust the um, <laughs> exposure on her? She looks a little dark. You set it's it on because auto. there's no light. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of hanging out in a little cave over there. Oh, turn her. Oh, her light is above her head. Yeah, it's on. It's just dark. It yeah. is. Yeah. All right, okay. pretty girl. Everybody, welcome to Bird Dog Chat with Ethan and Cat. We are here this evening to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Questy Pop, as well as have the opportunities Pretty to... Pretty sure I said the naughty, but you know. Well, um, as well as make sure to uh, make time for questions. Um, so if you have questions this evening as you're thinking about them, whether they be related to your new puppy or your whatever have you going on or you have questions specifically in regards to what we talked about this evening um, or how we would judge your individual dog's test and no we can't do that I'm just teasing but if you have questions about what's going on we're here to answer them throw them in the comments and we'll get to them in the second half of this episode's if you are new to our bird dog chats, we have a order of events that we usually go through and that involves check-ins, which we're going to be doing here shortly, as well as that we also really are going to be ro playing bird dog bingo tonight. So if you want to get your bird dog bingo card, you have to be a patron. Go to patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. Cutting you off. The last two or three times we've played this game... No one has won two times? No, somebody won the last time. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Oh, right at the last oh, minute. Oh, look or at that. Oh, Questy Pup Questy off Pup the bat. There. Is <laughs> there a um, cat says something mildly inappropriate comment on there? Oh. I got th this is basically a free card, too. Free spot. Oh, coming up soon. Oh. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to read oh, all of them. I got a good shot tonight. You do. Um, this evening, we're giving away three prizes. Okay? So, uh, Easy Leads, special edition that will probably be here to stay because so many people love them so much. We're making brass hardware Easy Leads. It's 100% uh, it's brass minus the, the sweet action little taggy down here. This little guy, the little marker that lets you know you have an official real deal here. The Easy Lead tag on... You're doing a terrible beep, job beep, at that. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Um, that's on there. Everything else is brass. They come in every color. They come in every size, but brass hardware. So um, I actually did, this is kind of a fun little chit chat about the leads themselves. Logan, our shipping manager, and I did a little test. We grabbed a um, pickup truck and a uh, Ranger and a winch on a ranger, and a scale. And we pulled on the leads, clipped onto the handle and clipped onto the clip portion, and we pulled on the leads until we could max out without breaking them. And they were able to hold a sustained weight of over 500 pounds. How, how did you measure that? With the scale. Oh, like you, the, you, you forgot to mention that you used a scale. I did forget to mention it. We just hit the winch button till we felt like it, it was, was about, about 500, 500 pounds. pounds and went, oh, yeah. No, there's a, we had a scale and you had just to... Just keeping you honest, babe. So the first one I pulled and it was like, holy cow, and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and broke it. And it didn't hold long enough because we were kind of afraid that when we actually broke it that something was going to pew, you know, and break your face or... <laughs> You know what I'm saying, right? Super safe. We We're didn't have safety glasses safe on or anything. Safe this was experiment a here. This was a scientific test. So we, um, you had to hold it for like a second and a half for it to register, and then it would hold the scale measurement. It would beep, and then it would hold the scale measurement. So it went more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, more pressure. I think it's about to break 300 something. Like, oh, we can do more. Mm -hmm. Beep. Check it. 
four seventy five. It was like five fifteen was the nice the top effects. end. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a winch. We winched it. Um, but over five hundred pounds with both the brass and the stainless. The first thing to give was basically the crimp itself that holds the deal. But 500 pounds, it's like, uh, and in Logan's words, exactly. I would hate to meet the dog that broke this leash. Yeah, basically <laughs> but more a bear. So, but more so, I would hate to meet the man that held on to the leash, or woman, that held on to the leash that the dog broke. <laughs> Because you were you you are more man or woman than any any of us. So um, yeah, exactly. Long story short, they're a solid product, and we had some cool testing stuff that was kind of fun the other day. So. Yeah. Anyway, so we talked about getting your bird dog bingo card. How you can win these awesome easy leads is by giving us a bingo shout out when you get one. We'll verify, and then we can get one of these shipped out to you guys. Three uh, people will win three tonight. People tonight. You better pay attention. Yeah. So. There will be winners. Start watching for our crazy idiosyncrasies. So let's roll into some check-ins, and then we can get into some announcements. And then our topic of discussion this evening, which Ethan already talked a little bit about, it will be talking about Quest's Navda testing. Um, and then we are going to open it up to questions. So about 50% of the time spent in the beginning stuff, and then 50% of the time spent answering questions, if we can make that happen. So. First and foremost, a shout out to patrons, everyone that is a patron that's here this evening and is not. Thank you. Um, Patreon is a social platform, basically, that's a subscription-based thing. We utilize it to have an avenue for people to reach out to us. Um, it was asked a, a lot, basically, how can we say thank you and how can we not feel bad about asking you questions? And we were able to set this up. Um, there's different tiers, different things, and basically, uh, there you go, different tiers. The T-shirt stuff is pretty cool, and as long as you select... And I'm poking at the people that have reached out already. As long as you select the size of T-shirt that fits your body, it shows up. And if you don't, and the wrong T-shirt size shows up, that's it not won't fit true you. though. Because Lee, his first T-shirt he got was the right size. Was and it? the second T-shirt they sent him is a small, so he gave it to me. So as long as Patreon um, sends you the right, I think something must have just gotten screwed up, and they sent. Smalls to everybody because it happened to several people. Well, we got to reach out and be like, come on, Patreon. I did, and it, what they said was a small T-shirt was what was shown as selected on that individual customer. So, yeah. We'll check into the Lee's then and figure out what's going on. If you get the on. wrong T-shirt size, though, they'll fix it. I know that much. So all of that being said, um, T-shirts, ask the pros, and then all the way up to we can be live in the training session either once a week or once every other week. It's the most um, expensive, but also the most valuable if you're actively training your dog and you need help, and you get everything below that as well. So it's a cool thing. It's also patrons are the largest supporter of everything that we do media-wise. So things like this, the equipment, the the all all of the stuff. So oh, and there's a little questy pup. Aww, That's a puppy the pup. pup. And That's a, a big different. big questy. Yeah, pup. it looks better. Would you, you up the ISO or you set on auto or something? Uh, it was at 4K for light. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's in Pixel Profile 11, and I'm not messing with it. So I just bumped ISO and fixed the white balance. Bingo. Much Little better. Little Cameron nerdy stuff. Yeah. Looks good. Tech talk. Anyway, let's go through some check-ins. We've got Hey from Minnesota. Smash that like button. Hey, Aaron and Elijah. Hey from Southern California. We've got Ian from Mission, Kansas, and Latrobe, Pennsylvania, Pretty Prairie, Kansas, Annie. Uh, Springfield, Illinois, hey, Robert. Congratulations again. We'll, I'll throw Lily a bone. She uh, got a 204 utility prize one, headed to the Invitational next year this weekend. Quest, no prize, not so much. She had um, a very great day, except for one little snafu, which we will talk about shortly. There's a pigeon on the windowsill, and you can see its shadow. shadow on the <laughs> really? On the yeah, on the curtain, but probably not actually in the video. I can see it if I peek through there. Uh, we've got Delano, Minnesota. 
Lola, Kansas, New Berlin, Wisconsin, Aurora, Nebraska, Daytona Beach, Florida. Hello from Frida. Hey, Angelo. We've got Cleveland, Ohio, Montpelier, Indiana, Aiken, South Carolina. Cheers from Texas, Oklahoma. Cheers from Minnesota. South Georgia in the house. Is it still been Hotlanta in there? That's what somebody said a couple weeks ago. Northern California. We've got Omaha. Hey, Tony. It was good seeing you guys this weekend as well. Des Moines, Iowa, representing your guys' back, back home areas. Australia. Woo! We've got our international check-in. If you've got that on your bingo card, mark it down. We've got three Is easy leads to give away. Melbourne or Melbourne or... Definitely Melbourne. Melbourne. I did not mispronounce it. I did. <laughs> we want three winners on bingo tonight, I guess. Working at it. New York, have hey, a sip Mark. Have that gin yet? I have. Okay. <laughs> Angleton, Texas. Is we've, it we've, Angleton? No, we've talked about that. I remember he put the, the protractor or whatever, angle thingy. What's that called? Is it called a protractor? Or is the protractor the spiky one? No, that's the compass. It was definitely a protractor, I believe. No? I don't remember. Ah! Protractor draws circles, I think. Yeah, the compass is the pencil with the little pokey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I said that was a compass. The pokey thing with that does the circles. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the angle thing. That's the protractor. The protractor is a semicircle with all the angles on it. Okay, what's the angle thingy? A triangle? Yeah. A, a square. square. They call it a square. <laughs> the triangle? Yeah, it's a square. <laughs> this makes so much sense. Oh, Why Lordy. I don't remember this it's stuff? It's like English. All of the, um, okay. the memes that you can see. No, they, they talk about the English language. Oh, so it's this word. Okay, so then what about this word? Yeah, that doesn't sound anything like, even though it's spelled exactly the same. You yeah, know, all the rules for pronunciation in the English language. Okay, hey, Justin from Atlanta. We've got Otsego. Hey, Melanie. Miss Kelly from New Jersey. Uh, Alberta, Canada, another international check-in. We've He said scale. He did not, Angelo. Mm -mm. Um, he we're going to ha have to replay. I, I was fixing the camera, but he totally said scale. Because After I told him to say scale? Nope, because I saw it in there and I went, why do they have this scale in the shop? It but was did it's he like the one that it? you hook I know a chain they on each used side. It, but nope. did he say it? Yeah. Instant replay. Somebody and just rewind. instant replayed it. I <laughs> thought I said scale. Um mm. will you will you adjust our uh F stop? Are we a little too blurry? Well, it's grabbing one person or the because other. Because one of us is leaning. And, if, and it's so... Ah, uh, yes. Do we get votes? I vote four, for it. Four, five? Four? Yeah, that's fine. It should be fine. Was it on two, eight? Yeah, so if I was here, then I was out of focus and whatever. So Just Stay on plane with me, babe. Oh. Okay, got it. Corpus Christi. Hey, Ashley. Thanks for checking in. Des Moines. Charles, the screen is black. Yeah, it was. It's fine. It you was the very you beginning. Fixed it now. Started, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Miles, Mon Miles City, Montana, Hickory, North Carolina, Southern California. It's a speed square. Hmm. Still, still, it looked like a triangle to me. Hey. Poly Square, Colorado Springs. It's for a square tool. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Yes. I thought it looked like a protractor. Anyway. We'll get back to geology lessons later because you guys aren't here to learn about <laughs> geology. You're here to learn about geology. <laughs> oh, geology man. is not as a study of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> or geography. One of those <laughs> geo ones. Geometry, geography, geology. There you go. We're not going to teach you about any of that tonight, guys. It's all dog training related. We Thank goodness. <laughs> You're not here to learn anything about school. Oh, lordy. <laughs> here you go. There's a protractor. Yeah. yeah. And geology talk is over. <laughs> yep, done. Done with that. Okay, moving on. Done geography enough. 
We will get to your guys' questions later. Please keep it to dog-related specific topics. No geometry, geology, or geography. Because we don't know. Now, let's move into a few announcements. One announcement is we will be at Game Fair this weekend. We will be leaving Thursday, arriving to be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm going to be at the Yukonuba booth. Look on the shows. Who is um, doing the, they do like a exhibition shooting. They do like a trick shooting stuff. That's always a cool thing in there. Seminar schedule? Yeah, mm-hmm. pull up the seminar schedule because I heard somebody is talking like around uh, 1 o'clock-ish. I'm supposed to be talking at noon. Not the, not the nope, Riverside we're tent. We're by we're the Lakeside Seminars. Yep. That's the important people. There we go. So the first weekend will be me. Noon ski. At noon. The second weekend will be Ethan at noon. So you come the first weekend, you get to hear me talk. You come the second weekend, you get to hear Ethan talk. Uh, you can also stop by and say hi to Ethan at DT Systems this weekend. Um, otherwise, I will be at Yukonuba's booth. I like what they did. Previously, it was hour long, and the first seminar of the day started at like 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning or something, which is a slower time period of the day. And now they've crammed all of the seminars into 30-minute blocks, which is awesome because 30 minutes is a better talking time period than an hour. Um, but they they just packed them into the window when they're busiest, which is cool. So Yeah, so I'm excited to get to talk to you guys a little bit about how to set your puppy up for success. That's what my topic of discussion will be. Um, and Ethan's going to be talking about building a better dog. What so. does that mean? I don't know, but bring popcorn. It will be important. <laughs> popcorn will be important? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you meant your seminar was going to be interesting, so that's why you would have popcorn. So It'll we be will an important part be there. I have been asked by a handful of people messaging already, are we going to have Easy Leads with us for sale? And we will not. Um, Not only are they very heavy (laughs) to lug around, um, it's a lot to set up as well as we're there with, like I said, I'm there with Yukonuba, Ethan's there with DT Systems. um, So we're not really there in and of and for ourselves. So um, we don't have them with us. You can order them online. Uh, We may do something like a show special and give out a coupon code though. So stop by, say hi, ask for the coupon code. Um, But we won't have them on hand there with us that day. Correct. Um, other announcements. Charles. Oh, there's a questy pup being so adorable. Can you pull up the beautiful black Bella? I got a horse. The stallion. The stallion. She's a mare. Hopefully. Oh yeah. With a name like Bella. (laughs) 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 Anyway, we it's coming. had the opportunity to finally get Bella Aww. imported from the UK. Will you just look at her? She's so shiny and so black and so full of energy. She is awesome. We really, really like her. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have a good friend, Robert, be able to pick her up from the Chicago airport for us because mm-hmm. she was imported into Chicago, um, and timing and everything worked out great, that he was running Lily at the same test I was going to be running Quest at, and he was able to make the swap for us and bring her down. She is um, a little ball of fire. She is so fun. She will literally hop up into your lap for cuddles. Uh, She is a retrieving machine, uh, is already, like, super sweet, comfortable in the house with the kids, the other dogs, the puppies, everything. She is... Very well balanced. Uh, I'm really enjoying her. I really requested that we put a really pretty red bow on her for this picture. And Ooh, Ethan. Can I just, <laughs> can we just, I'll send you that picture. And Ethan said, we can do it, but I uh, don't like it as much. So we're not posting it. You guys can vote because we're going to post the picture tomorrow. So you guys get a little sneak peek at um, the picture. And you can say which you preferred. Uh, the bow picture or the naked picture, and by naked I mean she's just not wearing a collar. Let's not get, let's not get our minds in the gutter here. 
The only person that's mind went to the gutter about a dog being naked is you. Mm-mm. That was not the one. You had a better one. No, this is that's the one. not the one. Give me a second. I'll have it down here. Just no, so that the one that you had did not have her tongue hanging out of her mouth. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't skew the I'm votes not, towards skewing. your picture by making my picture look goofier. I'm not skewing anything. So you need to start into your your topic of the things while I finish this up here real quick because okay. I have nothing to do with it. It's basically all you. Well, um, we had one other thing that we were going to do. Oh, what was the other do. So we're deciding, planning on bringing a dog with us to Game Fair because Ooh. you can't go to Game Fair without a dog. Charles, can you put a poll together on there? Or can only Ethan do it? Ah, uh, Ethan. I, I can took, double check. But I took sure. him away from the um, editing of the photo okay, to do this. what am I putting in here? Yep. Yep. No. Mm-hmm. Who else? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fix it. Who else? Anyone else? Yeah. Does that change? Ask your no. <laughs> I really want to know. Please change that. It's just silliness. Don't I, be silly. I'm sure it's silly, but even I doesn't want to know. Sure, that's fine. Great. Cat's not. Cat's not I silly. I so. don't have fun, Charles. <laughs> I am the fun police. I'll post another poll to see if people can guess what the r- redacted <laughs> answer was. Thunder, 100%. Somebody's only voted one vote. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, it's Here it goes. Skewing, skewing, watch skewing. It. Oh, my goodness. Watch the statistics. The things this are just exciting. jumping all over the place. Oh, I just want to sit here and watch and the poll. And the race is off. Oh, oh my goodness. Thunder. Oh, oh and Quest, Quest is, is making a comeback. Back. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be good. This is this funny. Is be good. Yeah. Okay, finish editing your picture while I start talking about the good, the bad, and the naughty of Quest at her utility test. So, Questy Pup, we had um, a lot of work to get her duck search done. Uh, She was not necessarily sure of what her purpose was out there. She absolutely loves to swim and she will swim around all day long, but it lacks a little bit of purpose. Uh, So we were trying to teach her what her purpose was, make this really fun, really exciting. And uh, we did. We we got to the point where uh, duck search was awesome literally dragging me down to the water's edge, could hardly wait for the shot to go off, and she was in the water looking for ducks, searching, having a good old time. Great. Awesome. Wow. That's exactly what we had worked for and wanted. Uh, We made sure that her field still looked pristine, and it was phenomenal uh, before we went to the test. In large part, thanks to Ethan running her through Masters before she ran through her utility test. Um, So she is a Master Hunter already. And then we made sure she was good with her drags. She was doing great on those drags. We did a few remain and steady by blind sequences. Not a hiccup in those ever. Uh, Ethan got on me and he goes, you better make sure she's going to heal for you. So I put a little bit of time into healing. And I was like, okay. She seems pretty close. She seems pretty ready. I am taking a week off because we went on vacation the week before her test, which is fine. She could sit. She could percolate on everything she learned. But I didn't put any more emphasis on anything and went to her test. Felt pretty solid on everything. I was still like, "Mm, we're going to be on new duck search waters. How that Is that going to play out for me? That's always a question that you ask yourself. Um, I would say that's probably the biggest question that I've ever asked myself um, is not, oh, I wonder what the field's going to look like and how that's going to affect my field. Or, oh, man, I don't know if this drag field is going to set my dog up for success on their drag or the remain by blind sequence. It's always... What's the duck search water going to look like? What's that going to make my dog do? Why is that different? 
So for, for example, the duck search waters that she has practiced on, um, she got to practice down in Texas a few times with Charles. Yep. Which was months and months and months ago. I mean, because he came back from Texas in March. And then she spent all that time this spring prepping and finishing, getting ready for master's. Um, so what was the water like that you did some duck search stuff on in Texas, just as a example of what she's seen? It was, um, smaller. I would say it was smaller than, um, your guys's pond and it had a pretty good waterway with down timber in it. So similar, but no islands. Got it. Um, narrow, um, the four people that would know what pintail pond at the ranch is would know which pond I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Um, and then she also did the, which, which, you'll, which pond did we, we hunt big tank or something? Uh, we with hunted Nicks. Broken Dam Broken with Nick's. Yep. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Let me think of something else we can call And then it. the 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 big tank that you guys drove past when you came like um, came in the gate mm-hmm. or went through the gate past the lodge out into the property called Mui Grande. She did duck searches there too. So that okay. one was big. Big, yeah. Big. But we used the islands out there, so she didn't have to go as far. Thunder chose to go f- 700 yards away. That's awesome. Quest chose to go to the island. Which this is also something to mention and talk about a little bit in this progression of training, prepping, um, utility testing, and then master hunter testing is sometimes, especially depending on the dog and the level of handle that the handler has, um, there is maybe a right and a wrong order of operations to go through as well because both Thunder and Quest finished their master's before they went on to do their utility actual testing. And the level of steadiness that is required for the dogs to run through masters um, is definitely, I don't want to say more than utility because definitely a dog can be that steady at utility. Well, it's the same There's except... There's more forgiveness in utility. Not even forgiveness. It's just you can kind of, you can make a mistake and handle through it in utility. Correct. In master, they say, thank you. Yep, so f- more You're forgiveness, done, right? right? Well, you, you, you get another come, chance to you redeem could, yourself. Yep, you could come back, if you will. Because Questy Pup would have been picked up in her field. M- most likely, if anybody I actually saw what happened. If they saw, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, she uh, made a mistake, but it wouldn't, th- that's the thing, is it would not have picked her up, even if they'd seen it. It would have just affected a portion of whatever. It's at, just at different. the utility just test. Different. So that's yeah. why I think a lot of people say that Master is stricter it's more so that a mistake ends the test for you whereas in utility you're gonna have mistakes happen and you're gonna handle through and you're gonna finish the day Mm -hmm. um but anyway so they did a little bit of duck search work before they ran through masters then we came back and we're like okay we're gonna do utility with everybody so now it is time to do the rest of what's required for the utility test which is drags and remain by blind and steady by blind and duck search which is because i didn't one. do any of that in texas i just did duck search in yep, texas yep uh so we started with some duck search here on our pond that didn't have a lot of cover at the beginning of the training season and it has definitely gotten more full with water and lots more cover on it and lots more ducks (laughs) we went out there the other evening and there were i think like well there were teal on the water as well as yeah uh, a big old wad yeah is that a thing is it a wad of ducks yeah sure sure Uh, and then a few uh pond ducks like we residuals yeah. that are hanging out. But um, we went out to uh, Mocan and trained out there, and that water looks different than even our water mm-hmm. does. Um, there's down timber. There's a lot of cattails. Um, and there, and the water was definitely down from what it has been in the past when we've been out there. So that's another thing. Sometimes you have been on water before and you're like, oh, that's where the test sat. I got this. I know what it looks like. I feel confident. And then the water is not what is expected because of water level change. And that was definitely the case out at um, Chris Hills at the Heartland test. Waiting on an acceptance. And I I also took her to the retriever training area. Oh, right. You did do that too. Yep. She traveled a little bit with Charles when he was able to go train and do a few other things with a few other dogs in different areas um, just to get other looks at water. Um, And before her test, we... 
up until like the week before, um, not while I was on vacation, but the week before while I was still training, we finally kind of had that push breakthrough where she would go out and she would stay out and continue looking and eventually expanding and things like that that we're looking for. Whereas at the um, Mocan's grounds, she wasn't getting out without extra help. Um, all of my, you guys making fun of all my geometry, geology, geographies. Yeah. Um, uh, no, and and then Mel- Melanie said, "Do you get to be across from the duck calls for three straight days again?" Ethan does. <laughs> yes. I don't. It's Darn. it's awful. So, can you go back and forth between the pictures? Uh, yeah, I probably can do that. So it's, it's like a pretty harsh edit the way it comes across on your computer. It's not that. It's not that aggressive. It was definitely sh- more harsh lighting. So we have a couple things working against us on these photos um, with the ribbon photo versus, or the bow photo, if you will, versus the naked photo. Um, first of all, lighting. The sun popped out and was much harsher on a black dog's face in the bow picture. And then she was getting hot. So what was her tongue doing? Hanging out of her head. So in my opinion, a dog looks a little bit better, a little more serious without their tongue half down to their knees. But what do you guys think? Bow or no poll. bow? We'll have to put up another poll. Looks like I win at this point. I said oh, we should bring Thunder. And Kat said we should bring the dog that is not on this list and I'm not even mentioning because it doesn't count. And... Also, the other option, option number four, would have been your mom. So you get my humor in that. There she is. Ooh, look at her. See, everything looks dark. What is going on with your display your, in that the way it comes through? Is, Do you, is it just a dis like the is it is, is it affected by the, the brightness on your monitor? Shouldn't be at all. It, it should shouldn't be. be, but I'm asking, is it? Uh, nope. No. Well, it doesn't change on my second screen, though. I don't know. Does it's it look dark? N- it does look on dark. On my it screen, looks, at least. It Maybe it's affected dark, by though. our brightness. It's not. Ours is all the way Ours up. I was adding the huh. pictures. Anyway. This looks aggressive Add another comparatively. Pull. Is it dark? <laughs> <laughs> is it dark? <laughs> is that what she said? No bow. Naked one? photos better. Yeah, no. I know. I know. Hands down. Okay. Who doesn't want that sweet face to come to Game Fair with me? Uh, cats. Cats. She's so stinking easy and sweet and soft and adorable. Thunder is ready to rumble all day, every day. Yeah, but uh, it's also good because then he'll be at 5 o'clock on Sunday. He's like, hi, guys. Yeah, true. Quest Instead will be like, I'm done. I've Quest been done be with done you since 5, o'clock five on minutes in. <laughs> Quest will lay down and say, well, she'll I look like have enough of this. She'll uh, look exactly she, like that the whole day. weekend. Yeah, she didn't. She won't be affected in any way, shape, or form. Sorry, we could just we, bring two. We, we, digre- we digressed. She keeps looking at you like it's you? all she ever does is look at me like that. Like <laughs> seriously, the side eye was real on <laughs> yeah. that one. Holy, yes. it's add, that's add all it to I the get. Bingo card. I, quest rolls her eyes. Quest <laughs> could we have quest cam going forward? Yep. My uh, request is that. Ooh, Muddy's been requested or Clay. Ooh. Muddy's too fat to come. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mama, Mama Muddy needs to stay. <laughs> she has work to do. Mm. Oh, she is not coming off that last litter of puppies very easily. She's um, not bounced back to her she pre-baby has, weight very well. She's going to be quick, and she's going to be running utility. So Yeah, I know. She's got work to do. Anyway, we can get back to Quest's uh, utility test. So, anyway, um, the water at the test was way down from what it normally has been, and which is fine. It still was plenty of water to cover, but um, the shape of the pond was kind of, I guess, J-esque shaped. There's kind of that hook up there into the cove, and then a more long piece, and then um, just mostly cover along the banks. So... Quest actually did really well. She kind of searched in what I call gun range. You know, you're shooting ducks for them. Gun range, checked out, saw if there were any ducks that had been dropped right there, and then continued to expand, cross the pond, uh, and worked the back bank, and then got back into the water and swam up into the other end and did really well. So 
I was super pleased with that. That was the second event for the utility test of the day. Her field uh, was really, really nice. Uh, there was one situation where we saw a bird in the air, and I was like, uh-oh, how'd that get there? Nobody really saw it. None of the judges for sure saw it. Um, and I just called Quest, and she immediately came off and started hunting for us. So no harm, no foul in that situation, considering none of the judges really saw exactly what happened and how that bird got in the air. Was it a wild flush? Um, she wasn't, you know, pushing it up, chasing it hard. So we just uh, moved on, found other birds. Uh, she she did a really nice job, had really nice retrieves in the field. Then, like I said, we went to the duck search. That went well. Uh, she did get in the water a little early, uh, barely waited for that gunfire to go off or gun to close. I can't really remember. Uh, she was ready to get in the water. So it wasn't as steady as she could have been, which definitely affected her next event, which was the remain and steady by blind sequences um, after healing up to the blind. Uh, she healed up to the blind beautifully. Very nice, obedient little girl. You're but welcome. then as soon as we got to the blind, you're welcome, Schmelkum. I have done a ton of healing with her. There, yeah, that's her doing her duck search. There's your little questy head out yeah. there. Oh, headed across the pond. Um but then at the remain, when I set her up oh, and left so her, she was already trying to get in the water. She was ready to do another duck search. Like take four, 400 steps back to the where you're standing and taking that picture. And that's so where the water normally is. The bottom is. of the picture is where the water normally is. Yes. So that brown and that green is where the water would normally be. You should be standing in like 15 feet of water. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh. So down. So this water, when it is full, can be pretty intimidating for some um, utility dogs that haven't seen water this big. There's so definitely plenty of water. So what did she do to search that? Just like so she searched screw in, around in the cattails over there or what? She searched in gun range here. Then she went across and she searched the bank. And then she came out and then swam along the edge in this kind of like mucky, mushy stuff. Uh, and then got back up on the bank and ran down further this way and then got back in the water and started swimming up this way. And then they had me call her. She swam clear up out of picture. Yep. To the mm. right. Yep. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. But then we call that T pattern duck searching. <laughs> <laughs> it's called questy pup likes to be in the water. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember you you, you, she left a little early, but you had a malfunction. I did also have a malfunction, um, with my blank gun or well, Shotgun with a blank. Um, I didn't get the gun opened all the way, and then the it didn't reset. So then when I closed it to... Um, did it go kaboom? It did not go off, no. Oh. And so then we had to reopen it, reload <laughs> it. Um, and so she was waiting for even more and got pretty amped up. And that was for the duck search. And then at the remain, like I said, she was basically wanting to hit the water already before I even remained her <laughs> by the blind. Uh, I was like, we are not duck searching again right now, Missy. We are having to do our stay by the blind stuff. And then I left her at the blind, went out of sight, shot. She was already moving, trying to get back out in the water. I had to go reset her. And then go back to do my next shot. So that was super, super naughty. Thus the zero in Remain by Blind that she received. Um, Would she that have we got a received. price three with a one? Yes. Yes. Speaking from experience. Yeah, we got a zero in that. So, um, and then at the... Remain by what? Yeah. And then at the Steady by Blind, she was trying to leave again oh. early. All the things. <sighs> And then she made her retrieve very, very nicely, brought it all the way back. She did wait for the duck to, to go. Like well, once after, after she, I got on her, like, and she went twice before. Yeah, yeah. she left on your first shot during yeah. the study. And, and then I had to get her back before we could do the second distraction shot and all the, and then the launch. And she looks so sad. Like, I'm so sorry that I did that, but not really, because I had a lot of fun. Um, and then our last event, even though I already knew things were not looking good, was we had our drag of duck, and that she was in the pouring rain. This day was kind of crazy. It was on-off raining all day long. It would rain, and then it would 
stop raining and then it would rain and then it would stop raining. Then you get a little warm and then you take your jacket off. Then it would start raining. So then you put your jacket back on. It was, it was all over the place. Um, and it was full on pouring down rain when we did the, the drag, which we went out and she did just great. Um, but unfortunately due to her naughtiness at the remain by blind, we did not prize. And the really, really fun part about this is Charles and I did this sequence today in training. Cause I'm like, Got her entered in another test. I'm Did gonna you go use try again. Quail today in training for the remain by blind. Yeah, no, we use a duck. Ah, okay. What? What? Uh, was that another bingo? If people are paying attention. <laughs> we got three winners tonight. All right. Ethan's Ethan's feeding you winner winner chicken dinners. But we went and set up this exact sequence. She didn't twitch. Move a muscle, blink an eye when I left her by the blind today. She just sat there. Actually, she stood there, whoa, there, right next to the blind. Perfect. Never even, just softly whine because mom's gone. (laughs) Mom, mom, come back. And then I came back and I placed her outside the blind. And she stood through everything until the duck hit the water. Which, if you know what the sequence is, it's... um, there's the distraction shot, then you shoot, and there's a distraction shot, then the duck gets thrown, you shoot on the duck, like you're swing, shoot like you're shooting the duck, the duck hits the water, and then there's supposed to be a pause between the duck hitting the water and when you send them for their retrieve, and I was waiting for that pause. The duck hit the water, I had not made the decision to send her, she made the decision to send her, so I got on her, I stopped her, I brought her back, healed her up, made her settle down, We shot a couple more times just to, I went back in the blind, shot a couple more times. Then she stayed steady through all that center for the next, for that retrieve. Um, And then she retrieved that perfectly to hand. So was a really good training session, really something to um, look at closely from a, how can we challenge her and help her be better and more prepared for her next test, which is only in a few weeks. So our game plan, Charles and I are, we are going to set up a duck search, which she can still use more practice at. And then almost immediately following that, we'll do another dog's duck search or another dog's remain sequence. And then she's going to go right on to do her remain by blind sequence on the exact same water that we just duck searched on, which was part of, um, I don't want to say the problem because I'm not making excuses. She totally messed up. But we did the duck search and the remain and steady by blind sequence on the exact same piece of water just down, I don't know, 50, 60 yards probably from that. Um, And it was pretty close um, timing-wise as well to what I'm explaining because there were only three utility dogs and four NA dogs. And the NA dogs had all run through their whole portions of the test already. So they were just working through those last three utility dogs Quest was the middle utility dog. So she did her duck search. Then one more dog did their duck search. Then we set up the remain. One dog did their, you know, steady and remain by blind sequence. Then it was her turn. So she, there was not much sitting. She was still super jacked up, amped up from that duck search um, on the same water. Uh, and so I could have maybe handled her a little bit more, got on her a little bit more to try and get her to stay a little more steady. But Um, She was having a good day, having a lot of fun. I love to see that level of excitement and fun out of Questy Pup. Haven't seen that level of, um, as you can see, she's kind of a mellow fellow. Uh, So haven't seen that out of her. And so it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun, learned a lot. I mean, you're always learning. If you're not learning, you're not trying. And I'm excited to get an opportunity to run her here um, at Midwest Tri-State here at the end of the month. So Where is the... Where was the test at? Heartland in Brainerd, Nebraska. At How close Crystal's. is that to the Sandhills? Because that's what Dustin's talking about, trying to go out and hunt. West. Nah. No. Mm. Straight, it's straight north four hours, basically. From you. us. And Sandhills are west. Yeah. All right, right. So Brainerd, Nebraska. But we used to go out to... Brewster. Brewster, Brewster Nebraska. Different and that's bees. in the Sandhills. Brainerd bees. is... You know, where, remember where Branch Stoke is? Right, 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 right. That's like... 25 minutes from Brainerd. Lincoln. 20 minutes. Yep. Straight yeah, north of Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. 
Got it, got it, got it. Well, that was the good, the bad, and the naughty of Quest. And uh, we can now move on to answering some questions and hopefully getting some bingo bangos. The is she whining? Is it her or is it him? Him squeaking over there? Yeah, a little He's bit, but like real. It's barely, like, that's why I thought it was her. These noise canceling headphones cancel. And they're not, they just kind of halfway cancel. I feel canceled. I can watch this. I'll be canceled. <laughs> you are canceled. Thanks, babe. Uncanceled. Thanks. Pull up the questions. Since you can't read squinty face. Where are the questions? Where are the questions? Oh, somebody had a really good question in the beginning. It was kind of fun. Um, I was just thinking about this literally today. I, we're just in a state, and it's tough. Yes, please. Yes, please. We're just in a state that's kind of tough from, uh, and I say this after coming back from vacation, but um, we have a lot of pieces moving. We have a lot of pieces moving. So, it. thank you, Annie. The, um, it's, there are some pieces that fall to the back burner. And the guy with the pink gun channel videos are fun, but they take extra and... It's like if I'm going to get something important done or make a fun video on my silly channel, I get something important done. But And to be fair, we are throwing a lot at Dustin, our video editor. And so, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So between our videos, he's helping out with some of Lone Duck's video editing uh, on top of podcast editing, which those are rolling on the YouTube channel now, and some of the new ones that Charles has shot are getting edited so that they will be out as well. Um, so that, it's just a lot of editing um, on top of the actual filming of those videos. You know, every video that gets edited also has been filmed. So um, we, we've put a lot on his plate, and hopefully at some point things will even out, catch up, whatever you want to call it, and we'll have time for Ethan to play around with his pink gun channel again and his pigeons and his videos. I would say that the pond has maintained or you want to, you can answer it. No, 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 go for it. Yes. Yeah. I think it's maintained and it's, I mean, we've gotten a lot of rain, but it's way up right now. Right now. It's it's way up. This will be a good test. So I don't feel like, I mean, yes, there's evaporation, but it's, it was way down. And it was going down really pretty quickly it before was like we every did day the I look out and it's down another six or it keeps receding six, eight, ten inches. Yeah, before whatever. the before we did the I think it damn it. it. It currently is working. The, it definitely the science experiment it. portion that I have in the jar is really weird to look at. The amount that it's what happened? Is the jar still up there? Oh, no, no, no. It's downstairs. Oh. I go get it. Um, it's really weird looking, though. It's the amount. So we put, like, the amount you would season a steak with is how I explained it in the video because that's all the more that I put on the dirt level. More dirt, water. And it is literally almost three inches. That has all expanded and made this blockage layer. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And the water that I'd put on top of it keeps evaporating. So I keep adding more water to the top, and it just keeps evaporating because it's sitting in the warehouse near the air conditioner. So just air blowing over it, whatever, just keeps evaporating. And it's just dry. So all the things, all of the things. So that was a, a good one. The there will be a video upcoming because we in the video we talked about habitat and everything else and I want to show where the grass is at because we were just talking about this yesterday I think about how everywhere we planted is completely covered like it was planted of crabgrass like and I went through looking through the mixes and the big 10 might have had crabgrass in it but I don't think anything had crabgrass in it so it's just a matter of crabgrass must just grow in Kansas when nothing else does or something. It's just yeah, it was something that was in the soil that, and that's Got what, disturbed. it was the right time of year that did it, and that's what popped up, and yeah. it's, it's what's hanging out now. It is a, like a carpet crabgrass, though. I mean, every yeah, single I went one of those sections. To, uh, yesterday? Just no, day I went and looked at the pond, but yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's very green. 
It is very green. So we had some questions that had popped in right at the very beginning of the live stream, and that's where we're at now is answering people's questions. That's where the pawn sealer question came up. Um, if you have a question that's just burning a hole in your pocket, you can throw up a super chat. We will give those priority. Otherwise, we kind of go through in order of operations. Um, sorry if we skip or miss any, but we try and get through as many as we can. Make sure it's not poisoned. <laughs> It's the first good. question is, how do I make r my running walker hatchet think it's a game and not Budweiser. work when it comes to hunting? Um, Not 100% sure what you're doing, working on exactly. Um, but sometimes if dogs lack a little drive or desire and uh, aren't as excited about hunting and it seems like they're thinking of it as it is work and it's um, not fun for them. You just have to find out what motivates them, what makes it fun, whether that's shorter training sessions, more birds, uh, so that they are engaged more. Um, finding out what their motivator is, is and something that is enjoyable to them is kind of the key, but I would really need more information and this might be something that would just have to continue a conversation in, on a platform like Patreon where we can help you a little bit more figure out what is going on, get to the bottom of the issue at hand and come up with solutions. So this is another good question from Chad Holmgren, what's a good drill to stop partial retrieves? My three-year-old GSP retrieves well, but will drop a bird he is retrieving when another bird goes up and is shot. That is a really, really good question, and we will definitely get to... Nah, just skip here. <laughs> We're not... Skip and come back to oh, it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Um, you are always so generous and throwing out these super chats. We really appreciate it. Um, yes, I'm glad that we are not the geography experts around here. We will see you at Game Fair this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will never live that down, just saying. You will, but it'll it, die it'll, slowly. Yeah, it'll always <laughs> pop back up. <laughs> All right, so the question. So how do we stop about the partial retrieves when another bird goes up and is shot? So there's a video on this. I want you to pull it up, Charlie. Um, it's not my video. Let me see if I can find it to tell you exactly. I don't even know if it's out yet. I'm sure that Bob is not still here. Um... He's got better things to do than sit and listen to our hour-long live he's hanging chat. Yeah, about that's what I'm saying. Protractors. About protractors and, and geology. <coughs> I think he's... Um, it is called... It's a hard thing. Oh, 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 oh. Diversion bird drill. That's it. You can share it to Charles. Copying now. Just text it to him. I'm going to try. I'm trying to find the texty place. There. You've got the Charles. conversation. Can your dog now. work through these distractions? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yep. 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 <coughs> I filmed that. Got it. Both angles by well, I myself. I guess you could have just pasted it in the chat. I just found it. Oh. Yeah, you could have. Yeah, there you go. That's smarter. Mm. All right. So the answer to your question is watch Bob's video. That's a good one. Ah! There you go. Yep. Yep. Perfect. We got it pasted. So that's the video. Um, it talks about how to work through those distractions. Look at this. Watch this intro, though. You want audio? All right, what's going on, everybody? We're doing diversion video. birds on water. You've seen it before on land. I, you've seen it before on land, I but I can't I don't tell think you how many have. times 
we've shot another bird that was coming in Perfect. We got it pasted. and so a dog's out the there doing a retrieve. Oh, um, it, you just got to make sure it's a safe shot. Those. That's my public service announcement. <laughs> All right, what's going on everybody? We're doing diversion birds on water. You've seen it before on land. Now we're bringing the action to the water. A lot of the things that we train starts on land, then you progress to water. Whether it be decoy introduction on land, then bring it to water. Same with our diversion birds. Uh, I'd be remiss to tell you that Memphis hasn't made the video series yet, and so I just felt like I needed to. Eight years old. <laughs> I hope that she doesn't mess it up at this age and stage, but you never know, I guess. But we're going to walk through the process, let her get some marks and have some fun and go swimming. I got my bunny, buddy, bunny But if I mute it, then you can't hear Bob. He's going to be my bird so helper. Get to hear my dings um, of the just like on land, register. we're going to throw a mark. It coming through my uh, why don't we do that and I'll talk through it. Let's get started. Memphis. So just like on land, I don't want to throw the first one when I'm teaching it right near the dog. I want it to be more spread out so that it's an easy decision to continue holding the bumper and bring it back to me versus switching. Um, to start this drill, like I said, on land, the dog needs to be collar conditioned to here. They need to be through formal obedience. They need to be through force fetch. That way you've got tools in the tool belt to make sure that they can do the job. If the dog were to begin to switch, I would know here, here, no here, 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 get in here, no here, whatever it is. Here goes one. I'm going to throw it off to the side. Bloop. Good, here. She looked at it, she marked it, but she made a good life choice. If they aren't still, if they're still wanting to switch at that point, I'm going to deliver a little continuous here, stem, here, stem, here, stem and get them to make a better life choice. Get your mark, good. Good. Memphis. All right, now we're gonna up the ante on her. We're gonna throw this one a little bit closer in the water and see what kind of decision she makes. Good girl. Again, you're gonna see this duck hunting. If me and you are in the duck blind and I knock a bird down, I send Memph for it, then as she's retrieving, we've got a safe shot on a wood duck over here she needs to deliver that bird to hand at first. Mark. Perfect. Absolutely stud dog trainer and awesome guy. Um, that's just a brief look at what that is. So adding difficulty, go watch the whole video. But it's adding difficulty, changing things up a little bit, and just essentially setting up the situation of dog has bird or bumper in mouth and there is another option and preparing yourself. So we used to say, or I have said in the past, train like you hunt so you don't have to train while you hunt uh, and and that's it we we set up situations that are going to happen you're struggling with or have or you're asking about in a training session and diversion birds would be the drill that you'd be working through so check out that video as well as the whole youtube channel he's got set up there if you have a versatile dog or retriever a lot of those things apply really really well he and i train slightly by he and I, I mean, he and us train slightly different, but very, very similar in a way. There's some nuances, but the overall direction is very similar. You can see more than one way to skin a cat, and um, we both learn from each other on a regular basis. Got to see that live at the, the seminar, and I called him out. And I was like, I can show you a better way to do this, and he was like, Really? Okay, that was drastically a better way to do this. And it happens all the time. Like, people ask the question that you ask similarly. And I'm like, I, I don't know. They just figure it out. Well, or, or you do a drill that <laughs> can teach them this, right? So um, lots of things to learn from different, different dog trainers out there. Uh, Ashley Wilson has a good question with red after formal retrieve one, is it still okay to incorporate fun bumpers in sessions or does this confuse? And two, how do you correct if dog breaks before release for bumper retrieves, but completes the retrieve? 
So, Ashley, first of all, yes, absolutely have fun with red. Do fun bumpers. It doesn't have to all be set, stay, boring, steadiness stuff. Uh, but the thing that you do need to remember is what you are doing, what you are asking for has to be finished. So if you are throwing a retrieve, Red is formally trained to retrieve. He needs to go out, pick that bumper up, bring it back, hold it until you take it from him. Swing into a heel, take it from him. Don't let him get sloppy with it. Just because we're having fun doesn't mean that the, you know, polish of what we're asking for goes away. He's having fun and that can sometimes lead to sloppiness. So watch for that. Um, But have fun. Do fun stuff once in a while because if you do these steady drills constantly all the time, that can get boring. Um, He loves to retrieve, so have fun with it, but have him complete those retrieves as he knows how to and how he has been trained to um, by holding, delivering to hand, no munching, things like that. And two, how do you correct if the dog breaks before being released for bumper retrieves but completes the retrieve? We were talking about this, I think, on the phone the other day. Um, but I want to reiterate, depending on where he's at in training and the level of steadiness and things that you're working on, we want to make sure that you have a way to stop him that doesn't involve the collar. Um, so if you can stop him from making that retrieve, whoa, no, stop him. If you can't, then you need something else like a tether to help him stay steady. And then once he stops, once he gives into that, once he's sitting, then you can unclip him. Then you can drop that steady tab handle and you can say, go get it. Um, but you don't want to be trying to stop him and turning him around with the, the collar. Uh, that's when the confusion can happen. That's when he can start popping, when he is allowed to make retrieves because he's expecting that collar pressure. Uh, so you want to make sure that especially in those beginning stages that you have a tether on him or that steady tab on him. Um, You can stop him verbally. And I was going to say something else, and I'm trying to remember what it was. Well, also, at a certain extent, when a dog is correctly collar conditioned, if he's far enough along, then the collar can just start driving him to it anyway. So it kind of becomes... Collar conditioned to fetch, yeah. Yeah, 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 it can can make it even more confusing now. Why, Why are you yelling at me? I'm going. I don't yep. understand. You're like, so, why am I feeling yeah. the collar? I'm yeah. going. I'm going faster now. Too. We are we are huge advocates in all aspects of training to work in the conditioning category versus the uh, I don't even want to use the term like the breaking or pressure related corrections and tell the tail end of stuff. Like that over there is, you know, it is just what it is. But the <laughs> Oh my goodness, she's something. Uh-huh. Um <laughs> the other but thing. conditioning related. So uh, all of the steadiness work that you'll see in in dogs, it's not pressure related. It is conditioning related. And then once they fully understand, then we can apply pressure to say, no, you've now made a mistake. I've given you enough rope to hang yourself. And here is your correction because you've made a mistake, even though We've done the conditioning category. So yeah, and that's what I was, that's what those, that's, was the, that was the last, yeah, that's the words I want. That was the last thing that I was thinking of saying is, these are all the beginning stages, using a tether, using the steady tab, verbally stopping them, um, and then when you get to the point where they should understand, they don't go until you say go. They don't jump until you say how high. That's when you would take away those retrieves. If he makes a mistake, you stop him, and then you go take that retrieve away, and you say, no, man, you messed up. You don't get this one. Um, a denial or considering it um, posi- positive punishment. Um, it's a, a form of operant conditioning. So they have to have a full enough and complete understanding before you start doing that. Otherwise, it will get confusing. And you have to have a dog with enough drive as well and desire to do that with. Um, I, I will say full out, I don't know if Quest would be the right dog to do denials with if she would be like, mm, okay, okay, I just won't go to get those. No big deal. No hair off my back. Now we've kind of created a duck monster, so it might be hair off her back. Um, well, I mean, as a Vex puppy, there is some fire in there, in there somewhere. Super, super fiery over there. Yeah. Look at that. So full of fire. I mean, though, let's be honest. If uh, you put Vex in that chair, that's exactly how he would look. But he'd have his feet a little higher in the air. Yeah, he would be on his (laughs) back. On his back, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, but hopefully that answered your question. If you have more questions, Ashley, reach out. Definitely want to help you work through this. I know you're prepping um, and planning on running through utility, so definitely starting to work towards that steadiness stuff is important. You're planning on duck hunting in this year, which is going to be an important part of his um, duck hunting as well. Uh, as well as we talked about Bob's channel, he has a lot of retriever-based uh, videos with steadiness and things like that incorporated too. He'd be a great channel to follow along and watch some of his stuff too. She's going to come up and train with me. I know she, she talked about it. I know. So fingers you can, crossed. Uh, you could come. Uh, what was I thinking? The. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Saturday for the training day. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's, a training uh, day there's a training day here. This Saturday. In case you're a local. Uh, Kansas Navda uh, chapter member. Yep. You got to be a Navda member. You can come. It's uh, open training day. They have some fees for the chapter aspect of things, but check it out. Which Muddy dog's is coming? Muddy's favorite dog you guys have. Aw. Muddy is a pretty, Muddy is, pretty high on my, my favorite list, too. Yeah. Unfortunately, she is in um, pre-baby body boot camp. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She put so much weight <laughs> oh, on. Oh, Lordy. Especially in this last litter. Poor girl. Um, <laughs> Zach, Ginger, the softness of Quest and the drive and excitement of Thunder. Yes. Yes. Um. Oh, got a bird planner on both Friday and Saturday. Awesome. For which now? Uh, at the Invitational. Ah. We won't be there, but did you message that already? Yeah, that would yeah. be Annie and I will be yep, there. Yep, yep. Perfect. Annie is the volunteer coordinator. She is in charge of all of that. We've got a couple I bingos. Don't, um, we have two bingos. Bingo, bingo, maybe. Let's bingo, check it. bingo, maybe. Let's check, let's check. What do we have here? Uh, Muddy, yep. Vex, yep. Free space, yep. New product review. Well, the brass. Brass. Brass will yeah, go. I, I mean, I'll give it to you. Yeah. And then Navda, absolutely. And you basically reviewed the heck out of it because you were talking about the the scale. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think that's like a gimme. I mean, yeah, that's no, that's that's definitely on there. Uh, the scale that he mentioned the first time. Someone's location gets possibly mispronounced. Hundred percent, I mispronounce everything. Uh, Vex, yep. Quail, yep. Thunderbutt, yep. Hunting, Hunting in Texas. Hunting in Texas. Every bingo, yep. bango. Well, there's another we one. Another one. It says somebody's name gets pos. Yep. Whose name? Beer. I don't know if I messed up anybody's name this time. But you uh, are drinking beer. Chowls. <laughs> there we go. Done. That's drinking how the beer. boys say it. Uh, yeah, that's that's the old cater. Mm -hmm. He sits out on the front porch. Um, so our house is close to training the kennel and where like everything probably happens. Probably within 40 yards of the kennel. 50? Uh, 50, 55 is where we kick off. Yeah. It's around the yeah. circle. Yeah. Uh, Cade's morning activity. Cade is in the... What do they call it? The two-year sleep regression. So he has started getting up with uh, me every morning at somewhere between four and five thirty, depending on his day. And um, it's our thing to sit on the front porch and yell watch at Charles and yell at Charles <laughs> while he's roading dogs in the morning. So yeah, uh, uh, rooster. Uh, I don't know. And I don't know about that either. Shotgun talk. I, I, I asked who was doing the shotgun exhibition And I talked about the shooting. shotgun and the blanks for the stuff, maybe. That's I don't know about the rooster, though. I mean, it's a it's a tish of a stretch, but there was shotgun talk. Rooster. Did we talk about I roosters? I think we did. Uh, uh, yep. No. No, we didn't. That was a different conversation that didn't happen here. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Got to keep those conversations. I was ta talking about lot. training day, about not having fun. Oh, some of, they're paying real close attention. They just added roading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got well, that I'm I'm gonna say it though I because of where we're at. Ooh, I don't think we were quite there with that one. Let me see Let here. Get your hands off of the computer for a second. I got. I got that one now. I got that one hey. now. This one up here, though. Oh, this, this is not happening. This is Thunderbutt, Roading, Lone Duck, New Product Review. And then there is this as well. So we can go. First of all, while I was pheasant hunting, I had just shot a. I had just. 
I had just shot a rooster, and when the dog ran out and picked it up, they came back with a giant, I'm talking insano cut through the armpit shoulder region in the frontal zone right here. Okay, so as far as field care goes, everybody starts looking at me saying, oh, we're going to fix this on tailgate. Bingo. I'm <laughs> Charlie got a bingo? We are... We there are, was a super chat. There's a super chat? There was know. a super chat, and you just talked about canine field care. So now I oh. have my bingo. Now you have a bingo. So Everybody's got bingos. Bingo, bangos, but it's an order of operations. Uh-oh. Who writes bingo in the comment section first? So <laughs> <laughs> Pressure. Where's my cursor? Where's my cursor? <laughs> Anyhow. There is a difference in the field care aspect of things because the guys that are hunting with me, they say, you know, like, oh, we, we've seen your videos. You know, you're going to staple this dog up on the tailgate real quick. And I looked at it. And went, oh, no way am I this bad boy. So it's a, it's a difference of being able to tell what is and what is not. So field care is important. Definitely check out standingstonesupply.com for your... Stop that. Um, med kit. We only have a few of those in stock coming in the season. They're going to go on sale, but not until tomorrow. So, um, there are a lot of really great questions, guys. But grab it one is more. A, a quick one, though, that can be answered with three words. <laughs> How young should I take my pup hunting? He was born in March. Should I take him on a duck hunt this season? Just a second. I can do it in three words. I can do it in three phrases. Bird <laughs> introduction, gunfire introduction, recall. That's yes. it. Yep. Three prerequisites to take your dog hunting. Boom, baby. Not necessarily an age, but usually five to six months would probably be about the youngest, um, just from a maturity and getting through all those training goals standpoint. So We have confirmed bingos, folks. If you have a bingo, please send me a message on Patreon. I will get you a code. You can get an easy lead coming in brass. Yep. It will, I mean, technically, it's the only way I can set it up. It's going to give you the ability to also select a stainless steel, but select a brass because they're cooler. And uh, send me a message on Patreon, and I'll get that taken care of for you. Thank you guys all for watching. I'm Cat the Dog Trainer. And I had a lot of fun chatting this evening. Yeah, it was fun. Felt like we haven't been, been here done. in a while. We'll see you in the next one.